Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us this Thursday afternoon. My name is Deepak Joseph, and I work at Indeed.com. My job at Indeed, in fact, everyone who works at Indeed just has one job to do, which is to make it easier for job seekers to find their next job. The last few months have been tough for many people for various different reasons, from not being able to travel and see their loved ones, to also not being able to go into work and to work with your colleagues every day. It's been harder still for people looking for jobs during this period, and we hope that through such initiatives, we are able to connect you with leading companies in India and also the world over who are actively hiring. On that note, I'm very excited to welcome and introduce Mr. Raja Radhakrishnan, Group Vice President at HR GBS at Hitachi ABB Power Grids. Welcome, Mr. Raja. Thank you. Um, Hello, everyone. Hitachi Hitachi ABB Power Grids is a technology leader with a history that goes back over 250 years. Headquartered in Switzerland, the business serves utility, infrastructure customers, and emerging areas like sustainable mobility, smart cities, energy storage, and data centers. To all our viewers who are joining us today, if you would like to ask any questions, anything that you would like to know about the group, about how, how you could apply for jobs, please go ahead and apply to our uh, uh, sorry, fill in questions at the section below, and we will take as many questions as time permits. I know I would like to start this question uh, to Mr. Raja. So there's been a lot of talk about, you know, work culture, about, you know, how is it easier for people to join a company, especially during the pandemic. Uh, there's a lot of expectations from people, ex especially when it comes to flexibility in terms of managing work-life balance. Um, is there something you can share with our viewers in terms of, you know, what is your group doing to, you know, make it easier for people who come into your company, just do a lot of great work at the ABB Hitachi Group? Yeah. So uh, thanks, uh, <clears throat> Deepak. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, really pleasure to meet all of you uh, through this uh, event. Um, let me briefly explain, you know, in few sentences about you know, what exactly is the Hitachi ABB power grids? So you all know that, you know, electricity, we all use electricity, you know, uh, for various things, right? So electricity is uh, produced uh, at power plants, which are very far away from us. It could be coal-based or hydro or nuclear, right? Or, um, or wind or solar, right? So electricity is such thing which needs to be transmitted and distributed. So that finally, you know, uh, we use it uh, at our own houses, offices, or whatever, hotels. So this whole um, business of transmitting and uh, distributing electricity um, is what ABB, is, uh, ABB Power Grids is in, right? So it is a science by itself. It's called power systems. So we are a world leader in many of the products and systems which go into transmitting <coughs> electricity from where it is produced and safely to where it is distributed and consumed, OK? So we have very uh, world-class products like transformers, uh, switch gears, uh, which, uh, and also we have systems where uh, we are a pioneer. We have, um, you know, uh, invented HVDC systems, uh, which actually uh, redu reduce the amount of uh, transmission loss, thereby also, you know, contributing uh, back to the environment. So in basic, uh, you know, we are in the power systems arena in transmitting and distributing power. And we are a world-class, uh, uh, you know, a leader in terms of many of our product systems. And as Deepak also mentioned, we have a very strong, uh, more than 100 year history, right? So eventually what you're looking at is a company which is a technology leader in the power systems domain. And uh, we have now, <clears throat> uh, you know, Hitachi is our parent company now. And I'm sure most of you know about Hitachi. They are into various businesses, including, uh, you know, uh, consumer durables, uh, elect the bullet trains in Japan, uh, smart city solutions, and various other industrial products. So eventually what you're looking at is, you know, uh, <clears throat> a technology-driven company. Uh, which has got a very strong and a proven track record, right? So 
what we're doing now in the sense is uh, serving the uh, industries and utilities uh, with our products and systems and ever since um, you know the pandemic how we have geared up and uh, made sure that our offices uh, project sites and uh, factories are safe we follow uh, the 3p principle right so first is protect the people preserve the business continuity and prepare for the new norm so it's been now what we started in march almost going to be 8 9 months into the pandemic so these are the three p's which we set ourselves right at the beginning of the pandemic so first is protect the people so that's why you know we make sure that uh, people are our biggest asset they need to be protected so we have been you know operating our factories offices and project sites just after the lockdown was lifted way back in the month of may so we make sure that everybody is given proper uh, you know ppes that is uh, personal protective equipments and uh, strict guidelines on uh, social distancing and various other behaviors inside the office inside the factory and also we make sure that our offices are uh, uh, you know the the attendance in the office is managed such a way that you know we have around 30% of the staff the rest all work from home and we do it on a rotation basis to make sure that you know both uh, productivity and safety is also taken care so thereby you know we make sure that and we have also a team of doctors um, who are available at call to all our employees um, then they can themselves connect themselves and uh, you know get a lot of um, uh, queries answered and also uh, in case of treatment and other things are required we also take care of that so with this three p's we really make sure that employees are protected uh, we run our business and we also prepare for the new norm perfect so as i was just listening i just realized that this is possibly one of the most critical essential functions if i can say that when I mean, without power supply it might be hard for hospitals to function it might be hard for anything else to function so uh, i mean that's like a big realization that you know a lot of work that the hitachi abb group is doing is actually very very critical to sustaining you know you know just to have the lights on in the country uh, and i think that's like a great purpose for a company um it also seems very technical if i can say that so you know for a lot of viewers who are joining in if you could share some information on you know what are the specific kind of roles that they could look for you know what are the roles that the company is hiring for uh you know maybe everyone does not have a skill set in those very very highly specialized areas but are there opportunities in that field and also in other fields uh, for your company sure so you know let me tell you how our company is set up we we have you know two legal entities here in india so one is the listed legal entity uh, under the name of abb power products and systems india limited then we also have the second legal entity which houses the um, r and d center uh, the engineering center and also the uh, shared services so india is is the hub for the shared services where we are uh, you know supporting more than 45 countries so when you come look at the technical roles of the job which are open primarily you know we have uh, roles which are open for electrical mechanical engineers electronics engineers who have uh, you know experience in the field of power systems or work with our peer companies or similar companies but we also have a lot of functional requirements right so we have requirements in uh, finance uh particularly for our common uh, common services and uh, we also have a good uh, treasury uh, you know a team which is building up so we have uh, openings for uh, treasury analysts then hr then um, <clears throat> we also have a very strong supply chain management function which again is one of our um, functions in the common uh, common shared services so if you look at you know we are we do have more than Uh, 150 plus open positions uh, so <clears throat> both for engineers and also for people with you know functional and other qualifications like hr commerce supply chain engineering yeah okay that's that's actually very encouraging news and i'm sure a lot of people will be very happy to hear that you know there's a company hiring you know more than 150 people and also that shared services is actually handling functions and enabling functions in across 45 different countries if i heard that number right that's it's huge that's right um yeah that's that's so i think um, you know mr raja what 
I think the next you know leading question would be in which cities in these countries should someone look to you know uh, join in case they are you know thinking about the shared services or even the other engineering roles if we could just you know share some light in terms of do people need to come into certain locations especially since these are you know large critical functions where you might need people coming in are there certain locations you're looking to hire at are there certain roles that can also operate remotely yeah so if you look at our major locations we are headquartered here in bangalore um so that bangalore is also the hub for our uh, shared services so those um, those people who are willing wanting to work in the shared services should ideally look at uh, bangalore but we also have a major presence in uh, vadodara which <clears throat> also commonly known as uh, baroda in india so that again is a large manufacturing um, a facility for us we also have an engineering uh, center there then the next would be uh, chennai uh, chennai we have our uh, large engineering center with more than 1000 people <clears throat> these are you know some of our major locations uh, plus we also have a, a factory in mysore so but apart from that you know we have uh, sales offices uh, which are spread across the country so depending on the role you know it, need not only be you know restricted to one particular location but of course depends on the role so we have uh, sales guys uh, spread across the country but um, these are our you know major locations particularly in india perfect um i just like to remind everyone who's logged on in case you have any questions please feel free to you know share them on the comment section um mr raj i also want to now try and talk about in terms of you know taking a step back and your thoughts on the future of the job market in the next say 9 to 12 months there's been a lot of talk about you know uncertainty you know we read a lot of things on the paper but then you know when we speak to leaders such as yourself we are seeing that there are pockets where companies are actually doing a lot of work you know uh, we had a conversation yesterday where they said from a digital perspective for example companies are actually growing more than what they predicted because a lot of companies are now suddenly going digital uh you know can you share some thoughts in terms of what you see in the country for the next 9 to 12 months uh within your industry outside your industry uh you know what should job seekers keep at the back of their mind yeah so first of all you know i, I would say that um, we need to be let's say need not be pessimistic right so one is uh, we have i don't know it's correct to say we have seen the worst of the pandemic but at least uh, these 9 months have given enough time for us to you know deal with it in the right way yeah yeah so again if you see now <clears throat> uh, we are a large country we are you know let's say 130 crore plus people and the infrastructure demand is so huge right and we are almost inching towards uh, 2 trillion uh, you know economy as a gdp and uh, <clears throat> plus electricity and power or energy right it is one of the biggest sectors and there is always a growing need so for sure you know the way i look at is um there is going to be enough opportunities enough demand uh, the only sector or maybe you know which probably would need the revival is the services sector you know the hotels and the airlines but i am sure that soon uh, when the you know the regular industry picks up Uh, they will also be back on track but otherwise if you look at uh, let's say for us uh, here in power grids um, our quarter 3 we were almost uh, you know close to our targets and we also have a very good uh, you know let's say order uh, order inflow and uh, particularly the government um, <clears throat> you know now putting a lot of stress on uh, infrastructure projects so i think you know i would say that uh, there is going to be a lot of opportunities particularly in the next 6 to 9 months again uh, during the pandemic our uh, gdp has shrunk so again a country like india with, with such uh, i would say a demand for infrastructure and and the growth definitely all that uh, gap has to be fulfilled so you will see in my opinion you know very soon a very very active job market and lot of uh, openings and companies uh, really gearing up for, for the growth perfect um 
on that same thread you know since you you know the director for human resources for india and southeast asia south asia i also want to try and you know get your thoughts on the south asian market uh, are there some you know positive trends you're seeing there is there an increased activity happening in those regions uh, you know if there's somebody who's you know joining us from another country as well is there some some something slightly different for the south asian outside of india that you're seeing yeah again uh, you know if you really see the way uh, this pandemic was managed uh, you know if i'm allowed to say uh, it was managed you know very well in the southeast asia region right so particularly a few countries like vietnam thailand yeah. so they really have managed it very well and uh, without acting the industry as such so uh, from our uh, let's say regional point of view uh, we we really don't see any dip or sort of a negative growth uh we are wanting to you know make sure that whatever the targets which we fixed at the beginning of the year is fulfilled so that that's definitely uh, you know i would say a good encouraging sign in all the markets where we are operating and uh, we are very confident and optimistic in all the markets so in in except india in other southeast asia region then we are uh, you know having more openings specifically for engineering roles uh, that's again our uh, key Uh, you know area and plus a lot of uh, service uh, type of role where you know our engineers go and uh, service the transformers and other sort of customer places and we are also taking up large uh, export projects right so in sri lanka in bangladesh so there again you know we will have openings where uh, you know for project engineers site managers so i would say that yes uh, definitely um we will have growth and uh, make sure that you know we are able to fulfill our orders perfect um you know i think a lot of people will also be now thinking you know i i need to go and start applying immediately but before they start doing that maybe we should also spend some time to talk about you, you know what what are your expectations from talent who joins is you know extremely you know big company there's a lot of very critical work that's happening if i have to ask you you know what are the three key skills that you would look for in a candidate or three key three key attitudes that you would look for uh it would just help people who are listening to you know self and ask themselves if you know they are a right fit for the company uh before they start applying yes yeah so you know first of all i would always say that um Uh, if people are aware of themselves you know their own uh, their own strengths uh, that's again a key area where we look for because uh, in the end you know <clears throat> what we really look for is uh, how aware of this person is about themselves second uh, do they have the curiosity you know that's the most important thing um when you have curiosity then you can you know come in and learn um <clears throat> whatever is required otherwise uh, you know if you don't have the curiosity particularly for young people you know that's what we look at second is you know that uh, uh, result orientation right so that's what we look at so can uh, you know people uh, go ahead and achieve uh, their targets or their tasks because there'll always be obstacles so we always look for um, how somebody is able to you know overcome obstacles and go ahead and you know meet the target but having said this you know we have a safety pair uh, i call the safety and integrity sorry value pair so where we always say uh, safety and integrity are our two prime values which we will never compromise so which means that if there is a business in a particular geography uh, if it cannot be done in a safe manner when i when we say safe as uh, safe for all the people who are uh, you know associated with us as employees contractors or suppliers if they cannot come in to the place safely and go back how they came then we don't want to do that second is integrity we are uh, you know very highly ethical company we have zero tolerance to any other uh, you know non ethical things so as long as so, uh, people show these um, value pairs in a very strong way um, i would say this is definitely you know then you will be a, a good candidate uh, for us perfect so, i mean i think summed up perfectly in terms you know who integrity and who is able to deliver results i think those are two very critical things that you know 
you know anybody would ask of themselves as well um so maybe like a offshoot of this question so there's also a lot of talk about diversity and inclusion uh you know there might be a lot of people who fit this bill who believe that you know they can definitely do it they might not have the maybe the right certifications if that's required or maybe not not the right backgrounds uh is there something that you know the group is doing in terms of just making it easier for people and talent from a very diverse background to you know come into the company yeah so you really touched the right point because um when we were part of abb right so we were asked diverse a company as, as it could be possible right which basically means that yeah uh, so what is diversity is nothing but uh, ha- having people from various different backgrounds uh, so that way yeah. you know we are a very very global company uh, you will see that uh, if you come to our headquarters we always say it is like a mini united nations so you will see people from at least 60 or 65 countries right so uh, there is uh, you don't need to be a particular nationality to be the ceo of this company right so anybody can make it um if, if you have the right skills right attitude and the right experience so again we are now running a specific drive uh, to increase diversity and inclusiveness both here in india and also at our group level so in india we have also uh, branded it as spectrum so spectrum is like the rainbow you know diff- so various colors so diverge to converge he is our uh, theme line so we are actually very very actively looking for diverse candidates and to be as inclusive as a company as possible so we strongly believe um to have less number of specifications when you are putting up a job advertisement the more specifications you put that reduces uh, you know your diversity in the talent pool so our aim is to say you know um to have less specifications so we have we get as much diverse talent pool as possible and then we are able to make the right choice perfect um i think there's also you know i'm just taking some questions from the audience as we go along the conversation there was one question around um, people who have to deal with a career gap in you know in their resume or in their lives because of various reasons um I mean do you think that's a concern or you know it's not something that should hold someone back um as long as they've got the skill set it doesn't matter if they've taken a you know year off for various reasons you know if you could share your thoughts around that yeah certainly you know uh, we we have no issues with career career gaps and in fact you know particularly uh, uh, with women uh, we re- really encourage uh and go out to look for people who are uh, you know who want to come and join us who have had a break uh much before even the maternity benefit act was revised in india we as a company uh when the maternity leave was only 3 months we actually gave one full year uh, you know to our women employees uh, so that they can take the break and they still come back and join us right so absolutely you know we really don't uh, keep career gap or uh, anything as a as against the candidate we actually lo- look for people who can if you are you know fitting the role and as i said earlier you have the curiosity the result orientation and um, you know if you are also exhibiting safety and integrity that's good enough for us perfect you had also earlier and i wanted to ask you this earlier you had spoken about you know anyone with the right attitude over a period of time can become the ceo of the company you know you made a very nice statement saying you know it's just basis the meritocracy i'm guessing yes. so there are also questions around what is the career trajectory that someone can expect once they you know get an opportunity to work uh, i'm sure since it's such a diverse organization across so many countries there must be a lot of opportunities across a lot of fields a lot of countries and i think that's something it which will be very interesting for our listeners to hear from you in terms of how they can you know spend a lot of time with one particular company because i think you know trends are changing and now people want to spend a lot of time with one particular company as opposed to you know jumping jobs which was uh, you know something that used to happen in the past yeah yes. so thanks see for example i myself joined uh, this company as a management trainee 23 years ago right wow okay that's so, a long time back 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So <clears throat> what I would say, you know, is particularly uh, if you are if you are a young um, uh, you know person who has just uh, passed out or with a few years of experience is the initial part of your years is the best way where you can learn about the company about the product so the best time is to particularly if you let's say for a, take an engineer in our company for example i would really advise them strongly to go and uh, uh, be a service engineer or, a, or spend time on the shop floor as much time as possible because uh, you know our products uh, are not learned you know when you are sitting in an office so you need to go to the customer's place uh, our transformers or switch gear or substations and uh, that's where you really learn so you you form the basic fundamentals with that kind of a, a stint uh, as a you know service engineer or in the shop floor or a project manager or a site manager and then uh, you know you can look for other functional roles come back uh you know do a quality or a supply chain and then we we actively also promote uh, we have a lot of programs to you know uh, <clears throat> uh, pro promote people into the managerial capacity we have a uh, you know a manager relationship program we have a middle management program so if the basic you know fundamental is built then we will ensure that your managerial capability is also built and eventually Uh, you know you can uh, become a, a profit and loss um, a pnl account owner we call them as product groups and fortunately what the way abb and now power grids the way we are run is <clears throat> we are split into small uh, profit and loss units we call them as business units right so in india if you look at we have uh, four business units and each business unit manager is like a ceo themselves which means they have full empowerment to run the business the way they want it to be uh, but they are finally accountable for the key financial parameters of you know revenue orders ebit cash flow right so this in our opinion really prepares somebody to run small profit and loss uh, bus and slowly um, <clears throat> grow up and eventually also become the ceo so that's how you know we say we prepare Uh, our people to become CEOs or to take up larger responsibilities, not only in India across uh, across the globe as well. Okay, I mean that's really fascinating to hear. Um, I just want to ask you a question, which is possibly not there in what we spoke of. You know, after spending so many years at ABB, you know, if I have to ask you, what's 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 made you you know stay for this company for so long? There must be something really special about the ABB Group that's you know. kept you going and at this level of energy for so many years and i'm sure our listeners would love to hear from you in terms of you know the passion and the joy for working for the abb group yeah so i would in one word i will say the freedom right okay so this yeah. is the company where uh, of course i have not worked in any other company but the freedom you get to you know perform and also to explore the boundaries of what you can and what you cannot do so in one word i would say it's really the freedom and so along with the freedom you know you're fully empowered uh fully empowered to do uh, if you take an initiative you are fully empowered to ensure that you know that is completely uh what do you say uh, materialized right so even when i was a, a you know young uh, hr guy i was um, allowed to devise my own ways of doing campus recruitments way back in 2005 we are the first company to do today we are talking about you know the digital platform but way back uh, in 2005 we were the first company to do online campus uh, recruitment for more than 35 cities and including 1000 uh, engineers doing and uh, sitting from one place here in bangalore so you know that kind of uh, so freedom you have to you know um, sort of develop with uh, develop ideas and also go ahead and implement it so second also as i said you know this is really a global company and uh, we don't really restrict uh, uh, let us say <clears throat> opportunities only for engineers or technical people so we have enough opportunities for people who are the functions like hr finance scm so we also encourage uh, global i mean uh, global postings so i myself 
have done two international assignments i've done uh, regional assignments so i have again to bring it back <clears throat> at uh, hitachi abb power grids you know uh, diversity and inclusiveness and a sort of a global feeling is what you get so that's in my opinion along with the freedom i get in the job is what uh, you know yeah. me see that. yeah and i think that's very important and we've also heard a lot from you know people looking for a job that freedom and empowerment is possibly the most important thing for someone who's you know looking at you know joining a new company because they really want to do some of their life's best work yes. as opposed to being you know straight jacketed so i'm i'm sure people are thrilled to hear this uh it must be very very encouraging um and you know you also spoke about you know the hitachi abb group being at the forefront of disruption in terms of just making it easy you know if it was using digital tools way back in 2005 i also want to ask you in terms of you know what is the company doing today to make it easier for people to apply during this pandemic you know if they're not able to travel for whatever reasons uh if they have to you know interview virtually uh you know how, are there certain things that make it easier for them through to basically showcase their talent you know sitting on the other side of a laptop yeah so first of all you know all our jobs are posted uh, on the internet and you can visit our uh, you know <coughs> hitachi abb power grid website so all jobs are posted and anyone is you know free to apply and the moment they apply we, we they will go through a you know a cv screening process and after that uh, we've been as i said you know we've been doing interviews uh, online uh, for more than 15 years now so we interview people online and i would say that um during this pandemic right right from march till now uh, we have hired more than 400 people and all of them through this online media and we have also even the, at the peak of lockdown um we we had a we used to have a corporate induction program where whoever is selected they always come to bangalore for two days in our shared service center get the induction and go back to their place of posting but after the lockdown this was not possible so we actually started doing online induction programs right so and then um, still some people were not able to travel so we actually couriered them our laptops so that uh sitting at their own houses uh, you know they uh, they joined us and uh, also started being productive and then we also introduced the new program now called the power your peer because we know that you know when you when you're contemplating join a new company in this uh, situation you know it's it's very difficult because everything is online and some of our colleagues um, you know have not even seen the office or seen your manager or your other colleagues so what we do is it's like a buddy program so anybody who is selected before they join two weeks we associate them with a with somebody else who is at a peer level so that person then you know slowly guides them and make sure that uh, behaves like a friend you know in a, in a new company or in a new city and ensures that their settling down is very smooth perfect um i know you had briefly spoken about this in terms of giving a description of the various kinds of roles that you are looking for uh yes. there's also a question in terms of you know is the hitachi abb group also looking for non engineering roles like sales business development i think you briefly spoke about it but before i ask you that question i have a slightly different question to ask what talent are you finding extremely hard to find you know are there certain skill sets which are you know a very high in demand that you know is is the most sought after for for your group right now so i think uh, very few i would say uh, very highly specialized areas like uh, hvdc engineering you know high voltage dc direct current engineering and uh, sometimes uh, you know very high level uh, primary design and secondary design Uh, for some of our switch gears so otherwise normally we are again i think india is really blessed with uh, such a fantastic uh, talent we are able to meet uh, you know 95% of our requirements uh, locally here itself and also uh, we do we have an engineering center in chennai uh, which has got more than 1000 people 
uh, where sitting from here we do global projects across 40 countries so our engineers are doing uh, you know right from tendering for uh, for orders in uh, sweden and us and doing uh, engineering for uh, you know uh, substations across the world then we also uh, go and do uh, installation and commissioning of of these projects as well so at any even today you, during this pandemic two of our engineers are going to angola uh, you know to commission a yeah, control and relay panel and uh, as we speak we also have a lot of our guys who are sitting at various sites in sweden in germany in switzerland uh, serving our customers who are basically you know um, uh, from here in our engineering center chennai based in engineering center chennai Perfect. Thanks for sharing that information. Um, I think one other topic, you know, that's been top of mind, maybe the most important topic for a lot of people is around mental health. Uh, it's been, you know, so, I mean, I think nobody has dealt with this in their entire lifetime. Um, is there something, you know, you could talk about in terms of what the company is doing to ensure that, you know, people join the company, people who are in the company are, uh, you know, I think you already spoke about the freedom and empowerment, but other other things also that they have in terms of just having support in case they need any help from that angle. Yeah. So as I mentioned, first of all, definitely for new joinees, we have this uh, Power Your Peer program where you're, uh, we attach you with a buddy. So you can ask any questions uh, and, uh, you know, get the clarification from the buddy. Second, uh, we have... A tie-up with uh, all our employees are enrolled with, with uh, Connect and Heal. Uh, I don't know how many of you have heard. So this is a tech-based uh, healthcare provider. Um, so wherein all our employees are registered, and it, it's uh, it, the app is available on your mobile. And at any point of time, wherever you are in the country, uh, you can uh, take a doctor's help. Um, be it you know get a uh, consultation uh, online uh, for any of your physical ailments and otherwise also, right? So this sort of reduced the anxiety because during the pandemic, what happened or many of our colleagues also went back to their hometowns, uh, which probably are sometimes in, you know, uh, quite far off places. So we said, okay, let's let's do this so that sitting at their houses, they can, they feel that, okay, I, I know I don't have to go to a hospital because very, very unfortunate today, Going to a hospital is so scary, right? People don't want to go because that's sometimes where many people have got infected. So this tech-based, uh, you know, app really takes care of uh, people's requirements. You get prescriptions online from the doctors. And even if samples have to be collected, uh, you know, they come home and collect your samples. And on top of that, we have also tied up with the international SOS uh, globally. So they have a dedicated helpline particularly for stress related issues right so if you have stress particularly mental stress you can call them and uh, you know get your uh, sort of a counseling session and apart from that we also in india have an employee assisted uh, we call it the eap the employee assistance program so there again uh, you know you can call up and uh, get a counseling session done so plus what we also do is we make sure that uh, whenever we do online meetings, we also have enough uh, digital breaks or coffee breaks where you just bring your coffee and sit, uh, you know, along with your colleagues and have. So that gives a feeling of at least, uh, you know, being connected. Third, uh, we also try to run, particularly in my function, I always try to run all my meetings through video so that, uh, you know, you when, when, when we see people's faces, you know, it's a different feeling altogether. So that also sort of gives, uh, you know, a lot of uh, energy and vibrance to the people. Perfect. Um, question around freshers. Yes. You know, I think a lot of people, especially who are just graduating out of college, have been just caught amongst a lot of things, not being able to even go back and complete the graduation. It's been fairly tough for them. Um, you know, are there opportunities in terms of people who are, you know, just entering the workforce, uh, be it internships, you know, be it other roles that they can explore? Um, if you could, I, I think we have a few people who are also freshers who've, you know, asked a question. So I just wanted to 
you know, check with you on what can freshers expect, uh, you know, with regard to employment. Yeah. So as a company, you know, we have been hiring freshers, particularly engineering students. Uh, for the last 25 years. As I said, I myself joined as a fresher. So we do every year recruit actively at least 25 to 30 uh, engineering um, graduates. And we also make sure that we don't, you know, we go all across India so that, uh, uh, you know, we get as diverse group of students as possible. And we also have a full one year management training program. So all the engineers uh, come in as management trainees. And we have a complete one year program right from a very strong, uh, you know, three month induction. Then they are given two or uh, three project postings and they are made to rotate around businesses. Then we also have a sort of a management development program. We call it as the MDP um, at about two weeks. Uh, <clears throat> so this is just towards the end of their management training period so that after the one year, they are really fully ready, you know, in terms of uh, becoming a regular employee. So yes, uh, to question answer is yes, definitely we do recruit pressures. And every year we are doing that. And this year also we'll be doing it in December. OK. OK, so that's just around the corner. So I guess people in the month of December can definitely come back and, you know, like you already mentioned, log on to the website or reach out to try yes. and see how freshers can also. So I, I think that's definitely very, very encouraging news. We also had some questions very specifically around machine learning and data science. Uh, you know, I, I think there are people who have that skill set who would also like to know if they have an opportunity to use those skill sets uh, at the Hitachi ABB group. Yeah, certainly, as you know, now, you know, data science, analytics, machine learning, um, these are all, I would say, uh, <clears throat> key focus areas for us now. Uh, we are building up uh, in our uh, you know, global business services, we call the GVS, uh, these skills. So certainly, you know, um, we would look forward to hiring some of them, yes. Again, Perfect. analytics you know, is also evolving from being just uh, the first level of reporting historical data uh, to now you know, looking at more uh, prescriptive uh, analytics and predictive analytics, so where we can predict, uh, you know, in future, if this is there and what. It is. So uh, as I said, you know, analytics is one function we certainly will definitely build up. Perfect. So I think before I end, I just wanted to ask you, Mr. Raja, in terms of like an overall guidance that you can give to job seekers today above everything else. Um, if you have to just summarize it and say, what should people have at the back of their minds? Um, you know, how should they proceed in the next few months? You know, what would be like your, you know, final closing advice for people listening into you right now? Okay, so first of all, I would say that uh, be very clear about what you want to do. And um, <clears throat> then look at the, uh, you know, look at the job description and really ask yourself, you know, do you want to do this role, right? So only if you're convinced, then go ahead and, you know, start preparing for yourself. Find out more about the, more about the company and more about the products and services. And only when you are fully, uh, uh, fully, I would say, uh, enthusiastic about all this, then go ahead and apply because, uh, the that conviction energy level will eventually reflect you know when you are coming up for the interview so don't you know keep applying for everything and anything so focus bring it down because as i said there is going to be enough opportunities and um, in the end you need to be very clear of what role or what you want to pursue and look at the descriptions or look at the company look at the products look at the role and ask yourself if you are ready then go ahead and apply then sincerely prepare for it, you know, not just, you know, applying. Uh, <clears throat> so go ahead and uh, prepare fully uh, for the interview or whatever the assessment they're going to have. And so if you do all this, then you have that uh, curiosity. I'm sure, you know, uh, everybody will make it to their dream jobs. Perfect. Thank you so much. I think that's very well summarized in terms of people doing a lot of due diligence and doing a lot of hard work. I think there's no hard work for preparing for 
an interview and taking all the necessary steps to make sure that they've understood the company as well. You know, it's not just about what one has, but also understanding what they can bring to the table. Uh, so very, very valuable insights. Um, thank you so much, Mr. Raja, for joining us. I'm sure you have an extremely busy schedule, but you know, sincere thanks for joining us today. And thank you for everyone who has joined us. There's a link on the uh, screen, which you can see right now, and you can log on to indeed.co.in slash Hitachi ABB Power Grids and definitely look and search up for jobs. Um, thank you everyone for joining us today. Thank you, Deepak, and thank you everyone who has joined us and wish, wish you all the best. Thank you so much and take care of yourself and stay safe.